We're talking a little bit about science this morning, and I'm kind of loving this conversation. So you had another study you wanted to talk about? Yes, and this was a study that came from a research um, researcher at Indiana University, and actually uh, another researcher at Rutgers. And what it talks about is the movement of someone reaching for an, o an object mm -hmm. and people with autism and everyone when you reach for an object there's there's all these micro movements mm -hmm. that were previously regarded as noise and, and not relevant and mm -hmm. sort of just like there's not a smooth curve of reaching for an object you have small little micro movements however what they found is that people in autism have the, the micro movements that can actually show you that they have autism. You can like detect autism based on these micro movements. Amazing. And so I, I, I know I just briefly had a chance as you were talking about it before uh, the, in the break to look at the study, uh, and you were saying that they, that they were able to break it down as something like 240 uh, pictures a second as they were reaching to make yeah, so to, this, to touch so something this, on the screen. So they use a camera with uh, 240 frames per second. And, um, and that shows is, shows not only the movements but changes in speed, and they can do it down to like milliseconds in terms of accuracy. And not only can this help predict uh, autism, but also the severity of the autism. Is that correct, Alex? Well, it, this that's what it's the, like. yeah, the jitter. There's like this jitter, and depending on the severity of the autism that someone has, the, the jitter seems to conform to a certain level. It's very, very interesting. Um, and so is it more micro movements or less, or are they of a specific kind? Do you know? I find this fascinating. It, I, 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 didn't, I wasn't able to tell if they, they, they were specific movements, but, but I think that there were, there were fluctuations even in resting. So like even if the, the hand is not moving, there, there are you, micro yeah, movements. Yeah, and those can be indicative of whether or not someone has autism or what the severity level is. It's so fascinating to me because we're always looking for new and better ways to diagnose and we're always looking for ways to diagnose that remove subjectivity from the picture. So many people will go to get a diagnosis whether it's a child or an adult who feels that you know they want to go and get the diagnosis and you're really at the mercy of the diagnostician. There is very specific criteria, it just changed recently, but you're at the mercy of the diagnostician and the moment because we've talked about this before that, you know, there are different moments that I could bring my son in and he could appear in a way that he doesn't necessarily appear four hours later. You know what really bothers me, though, what bothers is, you? is when you have a psychologist who completely discounts autism as a possibility with someone who clearly would, would be diagnosed and right. should be diagnosed because right. they have this theory that, you know, it's overdiagnosed or... Right whatever they are thinking, which they is not scientifically valid. I mean, yeah. and the scientific community as a whole has a standard of what yes. autism is, and there's a standard test. And I, I, got, an, I got an email on Wrong Planet uh -huh. uh, yesterday, actually, from this 15-year-old girl, and she told me that her psychologist told her that she was gifted, and she linked me to an article on the psychologist's blog explaining that all these gifted people don't have autism and how, you know, this is just students that are gifted and are socially isolated because they're so gifted. And I remember when I was in the gifted program and there was a program full of people who were, you know, like higher IQ at our school. Mm -hmm. And they took us out. And even in that class, I had trouble getting along with the kids there. So I don't think it has anything to do with gifted yeah. or not. And I also think that that is discounting the fact that there are many geniuses that have autism, you know, and, and that really bothered me because this girl clearly needs to get diagnosed and the psychologist is basically saying no. And she looked up the stuff she was able to figure out on her own, a 15 year old girl Wow. that and she had autism. And obviously she's not qualified to diagnose, but I think that there are certain traits that it's pretty obvious. You don't really need a, a medical diagnosis yeah. to like see what's right in front of your face. But there, it, people are people and they bring their preconceived notions and it's impossible for them to, uh, they should be able to at that point as a psychologist to divorce themselves from what their personal beliefs are and what the diagnostic criteria are. But we've heard that story time and time again that whether it's kids yeah. or adults or teenagers who 
other people would clearly give them a diagnosis, but the individual does not. And so I love something like this that would have a way of having a test that isn't subjective. If you can map the micro movements and yeah, say this. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to say yeah. one way or the other whether or not someone's on the autism spectrum. I think, though, that that there's probably, this is not a foolproof test. I don't think there's any way to actually have a test. I think that this is probably wishful thinking to think that this is actually well, the, the new way to find right, if someone has autism. Right, it'll be interesting to see. And know, and looking I, at micro movements in their hands, that right. seems a little far-fetched to well, me. And, but, and, and because it's a big spectrum, I would want to leave room for the fact that it, it's not going to be one-size-fits-all. I don't know that we're ever going to have a one-size-fits-all, absolutely not subjective test. Uh, you know, But interesting, I'd love to know what the connection is between the micro movements and autism, to know why the brain is reacting in such a way that those micro movement I mean we all participate in micro movements but because these are distinct to autism it would be interesting and I'm, I'm assuming that they'll do more research on that to figure out what the connection is yeah uh, and, and what why it's happening that way that to me is almost more fascinating fascinating than the test